Stanford train station. is the tail and the front is the rest of the fish the church is 234 feet long almost half a block in length 54 feet wide 60 feet high covering an area of 11,500 square feet total volume of the sanctuary is 220,000 cubic feet. Outside the church, the memorial walk, stepping stones. 106 stones, one dedication stone, and 105 stones with 127 spiritual giants. 105 stones from the days of Abraham to the present. The first two stones cover prophets and disciples of Christ. The third stone with the 12 apostles does not list Judas. Instead, Paul is the 13th apostle. Most scholars believe Matthias is the 13th apostle. Acts 1, after the ascension of Jesus, and of course after the betrayal of Judas, the apostles elected a new apostle. Now that entrance is right at the crux between the body portion and the tail portion of the fish, which is more easily seen from above. Can't get a sense of the fish shape from this close. You can really tell when you're above it, like in a drone or Still beautiful though. I actually had a, quite a mystical experience driving into this place for the first time. And I can't explain it, but I had this sense of this is where I belong. You don't really see it on the outside as much. I mean, it's obviously an intriguing shaped building. You walk in the door and it is like being surrounded by jewels. It's just majestic. You have a long history of the church in this community, a long history of outreach and service in the community, played a prominent role throughout uh, the 175 years that it's been here. That's what this church has done, integrated itself, embedded itself into this community in order to make a positive difference. We are involved with uh, AA meetings are held here, Al-Anon for the families, of course. The blood drives take place here as well. It's even used for polling during election seasons, childhood education. Our facilities can be an asset, not just for us, because it's not just about us. It's about welcoming our community in, into our space so that we can be an asset. Wes Haynes, who's a preservationist, has called it the most important architectural building in the entire state of Connecticut. It's that significant uh, to where it's now going to be recognized as the first National Historic Landmark in the city of Stamford. The congregation decided back in the 1940s that with the growth in the city and the size of the membership, the old church that they had on Broad Street uh, was no longer going to be big enough for them. They contacted Wallace K. Harrison, who was a mid-century, 20th century architect. He had worked on Rockefeller Center, the 1939 World's Fair. He traveled to France and he was inspired by some of the Gothic cathedrals, particularly Saint-Chapelle. And in addition to the beautiful stained glass, he also worked with some engineers to pioneer 
the style of architecture on the walls so that you don't have any columns in the way. So you have an entirely open space along with the beautiful light coming in. Go into the like doors, we have to actually use the, uh, the sanctuary to the offices. The walls of the sanctuary are tilted inwards from 74 to 78 degrees for strength. To add further strength, the side walls are pleated like paper creased to stand alone. There are five folds on each side, 20 feet wide and three and one half stories high. The windows were designed by Harrison and fabricated in Chalta, France by Gabriel Laura. Over 20,000 pieces in 86 hues deliberately chip to give a prismatic effect. Breathtaking. Placed on the floor of the pulpit is a stone from Wartburg, Saxony, where Martin Luther lived in exile after he tacked the 95 Theses to the chapel doors in Wittenberg. The organ is a Visser Roland, four keyboards, 51 stops, 74 rank mechanical organ with 4,026 pipes, 61 keys per keyboard, and 32 pedals. The facade pipes are flamed copper and polished tin. The largest pipe is 300 pounds and 20 feet long. The smallest pipe is a couple of inches and there are 62 horizontal trumpets, all made of polished copper. The pews are made of African mahogany. The chapel seats about 75 persons and is used for small weddings and funerals and by church school classes and other worship groups. A central feature is a triangular window above the altar Fitting the wonders of creation. Climbing the stairs takes us to the second level where we find the balcony. Here we have another viewpoint and aspect to see the wondrous beauty of the church. Exiting out through the side, we come across the garden and the cemetery. The 
The 56 Bell Maguire Memorial Carillon Tower is located alongside the sanctuary. Rising to a height of 260 feet, it was a gift of the late Walter N. Maguire and his family, and includes some bells from an earlier carillon which had been given to the church by the Nestle Company of Switzerland and dedicated in 1947. After having lunch in downtown Stanford, I decided to take a brief walking tour as I made my way to the Stanford Metro North Station. And now I find my way to the Grand Central bound train headed towards Manhattan and home.